Well, sis, relax. We got money, right, Sarah? What? She's got $100,000 in savings. So don't worry, sis. So, Sarah, we're counting on you. No. My name is Sarah. I'm a 34 year old office worker. My husband Sean and I have been married for 10 years. We had a child right after we got married, so our daughter will be 10 years old this year. It's not that I don't have any complaints with my marriage so far. However, my daughter has grown up to be such a lovely and wonderful girl, so I'm happy and enjoy my life. By the way, my dissatisfaction with my husband is about money and the house. My husband has a habit of spending a lot of money on his hobbies, not excessively, but quite a lot. I still insist on him to bring the minimum amount of money into the house. With that money, we managed to cover most of our living expenses, such as utilities and food. But since he only gives me the bare minimum, I had no choice but to try my best to cut back on expenses. And I was paying rent, school tuition for our daughter, and saving money for future educational expenses out of my salary. That's my complaint about money. Then there's the house. My husband doesn't do any housework. I really wanted to split the housework since we both work, but he would say, If I do it, it would take longer, and use that as an excuse to not do it. So it eventually became the norm for me to do everything. We had a child soon after we got married, but my husband did not take part in raising the child much because he was afraid that he might hurt her or cause an accident. As I reflected, I realized that I was quite dissatisfied with my husband. But even so, we have been married for 10 years and our child is growing up. I knew that it's not a good idea to get a divorce when my daughter is about to go through puberty. I convinced myself that even though we're husband and wife, we're still strangers and that there is no such thing as a perfect home. However, something happened recently that turned my mind to divorce at once. The trigger was my sister-in-law. One day, my sister-in-law suddenly came to my house. Sarah, I'm sorry, I need to hide here for a while. What's going on? I had a little trouble with my husband. Let me stay here for a while. What? Did something happen with Ken? No, it's just, you know... My sister-in-law didn't answer my questions and kept trying to change the subject. So I was not convinced and had to wait for my husband to come home from work. Then my husband came home from work at around 8 p.m. After putting my daughter to bed, my sister-in-law, my husband, and I had a talk. So sister, what happened? Well, Ken suddenly snapped and got angry with me, saying he was divorcing me. What? I thought it was strange. I had the impression that my sister-in-law's husband, Ken, was a very sincere man. So I didn't think he would suddenly get angry and ask for a divorce. Why did Ken get angry? Why are you asking me that? No, because I don't think he's the kind of person who gets angry without a reason. That's what I want to know. I didn't miss that my sister-in-law seemed to be in a panic. But since he was going to ask for a divorce, maybe there was something she did that made him angry. Sarah, how come you've been defending Ken all this time? 
Are you having an affair with Ken by any chance? Of course not. I wonder. Then my husband laughed and said, No, sis, that's not possible. She doesn't have time for that, and besides, she always leaves her phone on the table. I was very annoyed, although my husband defended me. I don't have time because I'm working, doing housework, and raising kids. I have to make dinner so quickly after work that I don't even have time to look at my phone. In the end, my sister in law insisted. I don't know the reason, and we couldn't understand it. So my husband and I decided to talk to Ken. And later, Ken came to our house. My sister in law said she was going to kill some time because it was awkward to see him. As soon as Ken arrived, he politely apologized to us, saying, I'm really sorry for causing you both so much trouble. I knew he was a sincere person and had common sense. I can't believe that Ken suddenly got angry. Why did you ask my sister for a divorce? You've only been married for a year. Isn't that a little harsh? There must be a reason, right? Because she spent all my money without my permission. Really? How much money did you have in savings? 50,000. My husband and I looked at each other in surprise. 50,000 in just one year? That's about 4,100 every month. Besides, Ken has been giving her enough money from his monthly income to cover living expenses, rent, and all other necessary expenses. So my sister in law was using it for her own entertainment. It's natural for Ken to be angry. Anyone would be. I would too. It would be difficult to stay married to someone who has such a terrible habit of spending money. Oh. Something wrong? No, nothing. My husband has a bad spending habit too. I guess they are siblings after all. I'll divorce her if she doesn't pay back the $50,000. You don't have kids. I think it's a good idea. As I was nodding my head, my husband interrupted. Okay, I'll make sure my sister pays you back. Why is he so sure about it? I didn't understand where that came from. But Ken just said, I appreciate it. If you could please do that. The conversation was settled, so I decided to observe the situation. After Ken left, my sister in law came home. What did he say? Ken said that you spent all of his savings of $50,000. Oh, I used it for living expenses. I tried to explain to him, but he didn't understand me at all. But Ken said he had a separate account for living expenses. You don't know anything, so shut up. My sister in law is very harsh towards me. She has always had a tendency to make fun of me. Ken should just divorce this woman right away. Anyway, he said he will forgive you if you pay him back the $50,000. How can I pay back that much? I'm a housewife. If you can't pay back, don't spend his money. Well, sis, relax. We got money, right, Sarah? What? She's got $100,000 in her savings. So don't worry, sis. So, Sarah, we're counting on you. Huh? 
My sister-in-law is looking at me with a twinkle in her eyes. What the hell, Sarah? How come you didn't tell me that sooner? Wait a minute. First of all, how did you know about my savings, Sean? That money was what I saved while I was single for my future. After I got married and had a baby, I was going to use it for a daughter's tuition. I never told my husband about the savings. I found it when I went to your parents' house. It was in the second drawer of the closet in your room. You looked in there without my permission? That's unbelievable. We're married, for God's sake. Anyway, your sister-in-law is in trouble, so give us your savings. What are you talking about? I'm not giving it to you. That's for our daughter. There is no way. You got 100,000, so give her 50,000. Huh? Then why don't you pay her instead? Why? Whoever has it should pay. Sarah, please help me. I'm in the middle of a divorce. That's none of my business. It's all your fault. That's terrible. You don't love your family. Love for you means money. Then I don't need that kind of family love. If you don't pay me $50,000, I'll divorce you. My husband took out the divorce papers from the drawer while he said that. Oh, you have been preparing for it? I had it already in case something happened. You got a lot of nerve trying to get your way, you know that? That's exactly what I want to say to you. Then he filled out the form and said, I'm serious. We can divorce any time. And my sister-in-law said with a grin on her face, Well, I'll be one of your witnesses. And she put her name on the form. You can either pay me $50,000 or you can divorce. I wondered how these people thought they could intimidate me. All right. I pretended to give in and let the moment pass. The next day, I brought some people to my house. My in-laws and Ken. Why are you here, Ken? Why are you mom and dad here? I heard the story. Sean, don't embarrass yourself. Sarah, I'm really sorry about my stupid son and daughter. Ken, we must apologize to you too. Why are you two apologizing? You shut up. We went through your room and found tons of brown bags and jewelry. How did you find out? Ken asked me to look into it and I did. You had a habit of hiding things you bought from us since you were a child. I can't stay married to you anymore after you lied that you used the money for living expenses. I want you to pay me back the $50,000 and divorce me. Oh no! And Sean, you will get a divorce too. What? Sarah already filled out the divorce papers and I also signed as a witness. We just submitted them together. What? I won't allow that. You won't allow it? What the hell are you talking about, you moron? Threatening divorce and asking her who has nothing to do with it to take over the debt. You are disgusting. Sarah is my wife. She's not your property. She was not born your family. She's a stranger and you should have more respect and care for her. 
When my parents-in-law confronted him with a legit argument, my husband hung his head, unable to say anything back to them. My sister-in-law seemed to have completely lost it too, and she just stood there. Thanks to my parents-in-law, the conversation went smoothly for me and Ken, and both of us were able to get a divorce without any problem. My sister-in-law sold as many brand goods as she could to make money and pay back about $20,000. The rest was taken care of by my parents-in-law, and my sister-in-law had to repay them. Under the supervision of my parents-in-law, she now has to work from morning till night, in an effort to repay the debt. As for my ex-husband, I have asked him for child support. I heard that my ex-husband then lived alone in the apartment, but his salary was not enough to cover the rent, living expenses, and child support, so he has no choice but to move into a cheaper apartment. But he has a habit of wasting money, so even though he lives in a cheap apartment, he is always broke and doesn't have any savings. Well, he pays his child support, so I don't have to worry about anything else. But if he continues to live like that, I'm sure he will be single for a long time. Meanwhile, I'm back at my parents' home, working hard while my parents help me take care of my daughter. I want to be able to allow my daughter to do whatever she wants, when she wants, and as much as she wants. So I will continue to save money and nurture her. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you like. See you in the next video.